Good afternoon and welcome to NASA's Johnson Space Center for today's mission status briefing of the STS-132 Space Shuttle mission to the International Space Station. This is flight day seven of the flight. And with us, we have the lead Space Shuttle Flight Director to give us the status of the day's activities, Mike Serafin. So I'll turn it over to Mike for opening comments and then we'll take questions. Thanks, Kylie. On this uh, seventh day of the flight of Atlantis to the International Space Station, the crew is taking a uh, well-deserved break. Uh, they spent their morning uh, performing some preparatory activities for their third and final spacewalk on board the International Space Station. Uh, flight day eight tomorrow, they'll go out and uh, complete all the uh, primary mission objectives that we set out for uh, on this mission, uh, and that'll lead up to the return of the cargo carrier on flight day nine. Uh, this morning, uh, the team spent a little bit of time uh, on the ground working with the uh, crew of Atlantis and uh, the International Space Station to review some changes to our uh, third and final spacewalk, and I'll, uh, I'll detail those uh, changes in a moment. Uh, on board the International Space Station, the team is also uh, working on the uh, water dispenser problem. Uh, if you recall, the uh, water dispenser on board the International Space Station is not dispensing hot water, and uh, it's it's fully functional and capable of dispensing uh, ambient water. Uh, the team thinks that there's a circuit breaker that uh, may have uh, blown or be out of config and they're working on a procedure to try to recover the hot water no earlier than tomorrow. Uh, onboard Atlantis, we're not working any new problems. Uh, the uh, the uh, team recovered the pan tilt unit and the cable snag, I removed the cable snag that uh, gave us some trouble during our second day of the mission with the uh, post-launch inspection activities to uh, review the status of Atlantis's heat shield. And uh, they performed another checkout, a series of three checkouts, uh, two during the uh, spacewalk and then a third after the uh, spacewalk was complete. And uh, they just took it through the full range of motion at the uh, low rate and the high rate. And uh, the camera is fully functional and we expect that to perform uh, as if there were no problems uh, on uh, the uh, late inspection later in the mission. The team is assessing a number of options to uh, perform the inspection given the problem that we had earlier, whether we ought to go back to the normal plan of a uh, post-undocking late inspection using the orbiter boom uh, and the uh, laser dynamic range imager, the LDRI, uh, or whether we ought to uh, modify the plan uh, to uh, perform that survey while docked to the International Space Station and uh, should make a decision uh, either today or, uh, or shortly uh, in the, before we undock. Uh, we had a... Uh, decision from our uh, mission management team on both the uh, shuttle and the International Space Station side to uh, not uh, change the altitude of the International Space Station using the uh, shuttle propellant. So uh, our plan right now is to do uh, undock Atlantis with an excess of propellant. And uh, there was also a decision to transfer some 70 pounds of uh, excess oxygen to the International Space Station. Uh, 40 pounds of that will go into the high pressure gas tanks that uh, store either uh, in cabin use on board the International Space Station or uh, use during uh, upcoming spacewalks uh, where the uh, International Space Station does not have the shuttle immediately there. The remainder will be uh, put into the uh, cabin atmosphere. Um, for the third spacewalk, we've, uh, we're going to start that off by installing an ammonia jumper that'll allow us to uh, perform a future uh, task, if necessary, of cooling the photovoltaic uh, cooling system. Uh, right now, there's uh, no expected use of that particular jumper, but we're gonna install that just to expedite uh, use if uh, that's necessary in the future. Uh, we'll remove and replace the two batteries that we brought up, the two brand new batteries to the uh, port six uh, battery channel that uh, we, we knew we had to complete uh, in our, on the uh, cargo carrier. Uh, once that's complete, the uh, crew, uh, Mike Good and Garrett Reisman, will wrap up their, uh, their work at the uh, Port 6 work site way out on the uh, port end of the, uh, the International Space Station's truss, uh, bring some tools that they've stowed outside there uh, inboard of the uh, rotary, joint, rotary joint on the, uh, on the uh, solar arrays and uh, that'll uh, allow future spacewalks to be uh, expedited from there. Uh, removal and replacement of those two remaining batteries will allow return of the cargo carrier uh, back, or inst installation of the cargo carrier back onto the mobile transporter on flight day eight. We'll translate that overnight uh, and remove it on flight day nine using the station's robotic arm to the center of the truss and then put it back in the shuttle's payload bay for return of the old batteries to the ground. 
Uh, after those activities are complete, we plan to go into the shuttle's payload bay and retrieve a grapple fixture uh, that we flew up on a sidewall carrier, and uh, we'll bring that inside the airlock on board uh, ISS. And uh, later this summer, the plan is to install that on the Zarya module, and uh, that'll allow us to base the uh, station's robotic arm or the dexterous manipulator on the uh, Zarya module uh, should we decide to do that. Uh, we do have a couple of get-ahead tasks that we talked about with this crew, and uh, they're ready to go off and, and perform if necessary. Uh, there's a piece of uh, uh, insulation on the uh, ORU temp platform that we installed earlier on our first spacewalk of the mission. They'll go, out, go down and, and put that into a, a proper position so that it doesn't interfere with any of the robotic systems uh, should we use those uh, in that vicinity in the short term. And then uh, they'll go ahead and retrieve some tools out of the airlock itself and then stow them on the outside of the airlock in a toolbox. So uh, that is the plan for our third and final spacewalk. Uh, originally, we thought we'd have to uh, perform three battery changes, but uh, because of the excellent work that uh, the crew uh, of Atlantis did uh, yesterday during their second spacewalk, they actually got ahead one battery, and it allows us a little bit of margin and a little bit of uh, opportunity to get ahead on our third and final spacewalk. Um, inside mission control, uh, we spent a little bit of time today celebrating one of our flight controllers, a mission controller by the name of Lonnie Schmidt, who works in the propulsion systems, is working his 100th mission. Uh, he's our first member of the uh, Century Club in mission control. Um, Lonnie uh, has uh, worked at the uh, prop systems console uh, since STS-1 uh, in various capacities, and uh, today uh, was his 100th mission. And uh, we just uh, were proud to have them. Uh, the, uh, the day in, day out stress of being a, a flight controller in mission control and the uh, shift hours are something that uh, folks do get to experience from time to time, but uh, it's very, very rare that uh, somebody does it as long and as well as Lonnie does it. And uh, we were just proud to, uh, to celebrate uh, with him today uh, in mission control with uh, folks that have had an opportunity to work with him uh, past and present. So uh, with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, we'll start here at the Johnson Space Center. Thanks, I'm Mark Corot for Aviation Week. I had a question about the um, uh, heat shield inspection strategy, and I guess I uh, got lost or was a little confused as to whether um, you're going to look at any part of the heat shield um, as, as part of the post-launch, or you're gonna wait and do the um, pre-landing and just kind of combine one final inspection. If you could sort that out, please. The uh, ascent inspection uh, has been cleared by the debris assessment team, and the team is comfortable with the, uh, the launch debris environment that uh, could occur and uh, are sure that uh, we've got adequate imagery to uh, clear the vehicle for reentry. Um, Regarding the uh, orbital debris inspection and the ability to uh, inspect the vehicle after we undock and measure it with the precision required, uh, the team is just off assessing the risk associated with the, the problem that we experienced earlier on the pan tilt unit and whether it's appropriate to perform that uh, inspection while docked to the International Space Station a, a day or two earlier uh, than planned or whether it's uh, appropriate to go off and perform that after undocking. And uh, that risk trade is being assessed by the mission management team and uh, members of the imagery analysis team and the orbiter project office, and uh, we expect the decision here shortly. And I had a follow-up on a different topic. The spacewalk tomorrow, will you, will you go ahead and use the six and a half hours that you planned, or are you entertaining a shorter or slightly longer spacewalk? The uh, plan for our third and final spacewalk is, is for a six and a half hour duration. Uh, we do not plan to extend for any of the get ahead tasks that I mentioned. So once we get past the uh, grapple fixture retrieval, if we're close to the six and a half hour duration, uh, we'll just knock off the EVA around that time frame and, and tell uh, Mike Good and Garrett Reisman to come back in and, uh, and we'll, we'll declare a successful uh, mission as far as the spacewalks are concerned. Uh, if we have an opportunity to, to perform some of the get ahead tasks by staging tools outside in the toolbox uh, to expedite future spacewalks, or uh, the, uh, the uh, change to the uh, insulation blanket on the temp platform, we'll, we'll do that, but it'll be a, a real-time uh, judgment call based on uh, where we are. Phil Harwood, CBS. Just a follow-up to one of Mark's questions. Um, is, the, is the thermal protection system, both TPS and the RCC, are they cleared for entry as of today? 
the uh, decision that we got from the mission management team after review of the uh, reduced uh, inspection imagery that we got from our second day of the mission and the uh, rendezvous pitch maneuver imagery as well as the uh, bonus imagery that we got from the International Space Station, whether it was a crew member on the, uh, the uh, station's robotic arm uh, during the spacewalk or from the external cameras uh, have cleared the, uh, the vehicle for entry uh, from an ascent debris standpoint. Um, it, well, I guess that's my question. I don't understand why they're still looking at doing a docked inspection. I mean, if it's cleared for entry, what is the, why would you need to do a docked inspection? I just don't understand that. Thanks. The, uh, the docked inspection has to do with uh, the fact that some of the quality of the imagery is, is suboptimal uh, when you factor into the fact the, uh, the line of sight relative to the camera that in the on the uh, fixed boom that was assessing the heat shield uh, could not pan and tilt. So we didn't get as close a survey as we would normally uh, hope for. And then uh, some of the areas that we didn't see using the, the boom sensor, uh, using the sensor pack two and the digital camera on board uh, didn't have direct line of sight. So we had to use alternative assets, uh, space station assets, rendezvous pitch maneuver, or uh, EVA uh, photos from our uh, from previous spacewalks. And those are taken from a further distance uh, using a different camera type. And again, it was just line of sight, lighting, and there's some small quantifiable risk that uh, comes with uh, not having a perfect uh, perpendicular line of sight with perfect lighting that the team is off assessing and whether or not um, there's some re residual risk associated with that uh, relative to uh, ascent debris. Um, the team is comfortable with what we've seen and uh, there's no reason to suspect a problem with the, uh, the heat shield onboard Atlantis from the uh, launch environment and uh, they're just talking about what residual risk remains because of the way that uh, we had to inspect the vehicle leading up to this point. Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com. Um, today's execute package makes mention of a spacesuit swap for Garrett Reisman, um, or at least particularly his uh, using his backup gloves for EVA-3. Um, were his gloves damaged during uh, the previous EVA, or what was the reason for the swap? Uh, there was a, uh, a fit problem with uh, Garrett's uh, previous gloves, and it, it just had to do with uh, where the glove was uh, pressing against his hand, and just over you know the course of the the seven-ish hours that he was in the suit, it just got to be uncomfortable, and uh, he just opted to uh, swap over to his uh, backup gloves in in the hope that they fit better. Okay, that's all the questions here. We'll go to the reporters on the line. We have two. Uh, first, uh, Clara Moskowitz, please. Yeah, hi. Uh, before the launch, we heard about a number of science experiments that were being packed aboard Atlantis, and I was just hoping to get an update on how those were going. And also, I think we heard that it was possible there might have been a change to which experiments were being brought back down to Earth and when. The, uh, the experiments are obviously ongoing on board the International Space Station. Uh, we transferred the vast majority of them uh, from Atlantis over to uh, ISS, and uh, they're in the incubators and other, uh, other laboratory assets on board the space station. Uh, there's a Japanese experiment, a fish scale experiment. Uh, there's a, a vaccine experiment and uh, a number of other uh, uh, what we call sortie payloads, which fly up and back on the same um, the same flight, and uh, they're all short duration experiments, and uh, they're all proceeding just fine. And uh, we expect to complete the vast majority of those uh, shortly before undocking, and then uh, they'll secure the experiment to basically stop uh, and suspend whatever science is going on, uh, either through cold stowage or through some chemical process. And then once they get on the ground, they'll compare those with the experiments on the ground. Um, you'll have to, uh, we'll have to wait until after the flight to find out the final results of those uh, from the uh, payload investigators. Um, to this point, everything is, has proceeded fine. Uh, the uh, discussion about leaving science on board the International Space Station was a uh, discussion that pertained to what items do we want to return uh, relative to the minimum or the um, 
limited stowage that we have on board Atlantis in the uh, mid-deck cargo area that we, that we have available to us. And uh, there's only so much volume and weight that you can return. And there was some discussion about whether it was appropriate to return the uh, regenerative life support equipment, uh, specifically the urine processing uh, filters and uh, other equipment used to, to uh, process urine on board the International Space Station to make uh, uh, water out of that. And uh, again, it was just a trade-off discussion. Uh, we are planning to return all the science that we had launched with on this flight, and uh, that, was, that discussion has been had, and, and right now there are no changes to what we had planned pre-flight. Okay, thanks. That's it for me. Okay, and then next is Todd Halverson. Uh, thanks, Todd Halverson of Florida Today. I have a couple, if I could. The first one, um, I was wondering um, how many areas of the uh, thermal, thermal protection system have not yet been imaged. I, I remember on flight day two, I don't think they were able to get uh, the crew cabin and parts of the uh, left wing, and I was wondering what areas are how many areas still uh, require imagery? We've gotten imagery of all of the areas uh, on Atlantis. The, uh, as discussed earlier, some of them didn't have the best lighting. We can actually see the, the tile or see the RCC. Uh, it's just it's not the exact uh, lighting or conditions that we would like to see. Um, after our uh, second day of the mission, we did not have imagery of the the top side of the uh, reinforced carbon uh, that sits underneath the payload bay door area on the, uh, on the starboard side, the area that's along the, uh, what they call the chine, which is where the wing merges out of the body of Atlantis and uh, before it becomes the reinforced carbon, and then the sides of the crew cabin and then the top of the port wing. During the rendezvous pitch maneuver, they managed to get the vast majority of that. And then following that, we used some external cameras on board the International Space Station, as well as some photos uh, from the uh, first spacewalk when Garrett was riding the station's robotic arm uh, and the uh, command and control MDM uh, basically halted the robotic arm movement for some period of time when it when it had a, a computer crash. and. Uh, he just sat up there and took some great photos of the top side of the reinforced carbon on board Atlantis, and uh, we got those bonus images to the ground, and uh, the team was able to see everything that they needed to see. Uh, thanks very much. And I also was uh, wondering if you've had any significant indications from uh, the wing leading edge uh, sensors. Right now, there aren't any uh, indications from the wing leading edge sensors that would uh, cause us concern uh, relative to orbital debris or ascent debris. Um, there were some signatures from the uh, launch environment that we saw that uh, caused us to uh, provide uh, greater scrutiny relative to the uh, inspection imagery that we got on our second day of the mission, and the uh, team was able to clear all those uh, indications and basically verified that it was either uh, just ascent vibration or the, paddle, the panels themselves uh, uh, just moving together slightly, causing a, a signature that the wing leading edge sensor may, may measure. Um, that just tells you how sensitive that the sensors are in those particular locations, and not necessarily that there's a problem, um, but the team did go off and make sure that the uh, sensor signatures for the panels in question uh, did not have damage, and, and again, all those have been cleared. Thanks very much, that's it for me. Okay, are there any follow-ups here? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and go back to Mission Control. The next briefing would be after tomorrow's spacewalk, and uh, you can also keep track online at www.nasa.gov shuttle.